So we have our final talk of today. And it's an interesting talk because they are working here at the city of Amsterdam. And we are in Amsterdam, so I think it's a really perfect talk to end this awesome conference. Um, here are Shaila and Nick. Thank you, and uh, thank you all for uh, sticking around all the way to the end. Yeah, so my name is Shaila and this is Nick, and uh, we're working for the municipality where we are using AI to make the city uh, greener, safer, and more accessible. So here you have a beautiful view of uh, Alexander Plein, for those who know it, uh, in the 1930s. Uh, still very recognizable, actually, this picture. Um, yeah, and believe it or not, the municipality is actually working really hard to make the life of its uh, citizens uh, better, and also uh, visitors, of course. Um, and we are now focusing on to make it greener, uh, more fair, and more safe. And the very basic to thing to do is to just start analyzing the current status, right? So there's very big goals, but yeah, at least you know, we need to know where to start, what is the current status. Um, and there we already have a problem. Uh, then we need to know where all our stuff is. And that's not as easy as it sounds. Um, first of all, because city, yeah, it's pretty big, like any city. Um, if you start counting stuff like benches or trees, you easily end up in tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of things. Um, and secondly, uh, cities tend to be old, and everything you see tends to be accumulated over uh, yeah, hundreds of years, or at least uh, the last decades. So it's not like one big master plan implemented at one moment. No, it's really like grown over time. Um, and due to that, like asset uh, registries tend to be uh, slightly incorrect or incomplete, or at best a bit outdated. Um, yeah, and due to the same reasons I just sketched, um, yeah, it's just uh, not an easy task, also not to do with humans, because everything tends to just take, uh, take a lot of time. So what we did is to create a pipeline to do all this automatically and to be able to do it just every year for all our assets in the city. And before we go into the technical and also ethical aspects of this, uh, let me give you just a few words on who are we. Uh, so we're part of the AI team. Uh, we're a bunch of uh, partly technical folks like uh, Nick and I, and also people with other expertises like communication. Um, so our main goal is to demonstrate what AI can do for the city uh, through proof of concepts. Um, and we also collaborate quite a bit with uh, academia. Uh, for example, by giving them use cases or like getting back like methods uh, from them. Um, and here are some of our like recent projects. So we're working a lot uh, on accessibility uh, in this project called Amsterdam, Amsterdam for All. So we're looking at physical accessibility, for example, where we uh, look at sidewalk widths. So if we take all those obstacles into account, can people, for example, with a uh, mid mobility devices or just a stroller, uh, can they still pass? Um, in addition, we're also looking at uh, digital accessibility uh, by improving the readability of all our uh, communications. Um, secondly, more from like a technical perspective, we're working a lot with point cloud data. Uh, for the past few years, we had some interesting projects just by uh, yeah, looking how our city uh, uh, looks like in 3D and also how it changes over time. Uh, more specifically, we did some projects on monitoring trees and also on locating street furniture and um, the condition of all those objects. And the last two, uh, we're going to get into more detail uh, right now. Give the word to Nick. Uh, yes, so with regard to asset management in Amsterdam, there is one particular project we would like to uh, tell you a bit about, and that's uh, locating street lights in urban point clouds. Uh, it's a project that we have been working on for the past year. Um, and uh, it's actually a project where we can create uh, quite some impact. So we have some economical impact, you can imagine. For instance, reduce unnecessary uh, man or, uh, repairments uh, uh, and uh, reduce the use of uh, energy, but also some si societal uh, impacts, such as creating fairness in the city uh, across its citizens, uh, 
and also, um, in, yeah, well, increase some uh, 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 safety in the city. Uh, but we will tell you a bit later about it as well. So we created a pipeline for this. Um, very briefly uh, here on the screen uh, with a few uh, images. So we will dive into this in detail a, little, a bit later, but uh, very briefly put, we collect some data with LiDAR scanners. Those are our point clouds. Uh, then, of course, to gather useful 3D information from these point clouds, we need to do some kind of labeling. Uh, we use uh, uh, an interesting model for that. Um, subsequently, of course, we are interested in street lights, so we want to extract those street lights from those point clouds. Uh, and then later on, we do some uh, annotation with a partner of us, very interesting as well. And lastly, we can uh, match our findings with the current registries uh, that the city of Amsterdam uh, has. So first of all, like our data, what's that like, point clouds? Um, well, as you can see here on the right, point clouds are actually like a, a, a set of points in space. Each point holds a, a coordinate, uh, so x, y, and z. Um, then, of course, those points can carry attributes, color, for instance, but also intensity. Uh, you can imagine in the city, for example, that uh, a street light, or sorry, uh, a traffic light uh, has a higher intensity due to its reflectance than uh, the regular street. Um, uh, but also, like timestamps and those kind of things are uh, uh, part of the uh, uh, point clouds, uh, points, uh, so those can be used as well. Then you would, like, you can think about why not use images for this task, why not use images to, well, detect uh, or localize the streetlights in Amsterdam. Well, um, there's a, like a, a drawback for that because uh, those images are actually like a, uh, a representation in 2D. So, for example, streetlights could blend in with their background. Uh, occlusions might, might occur, uh, which make it quite a, a hard task to actually identify these uh, in uh, regular images, panoramic images, for example. Of course, you can yeah, apply some, well, triangulation uh, methods uh, to uh, like try to locate those uh, streetlights nonetheless, but we want to like do this very precisely, and there's always some kind of error uh, in this process, which uh, does not, well, it can occur with point cloud, but way less. It's very precise. To actually get some useful information from these point clouds, we can apply a method called semantic segmentation. Uh, semantic segmentation uh, is this process. So from uh, an unlabeled point cloud, we actually want to label those point clouds into subregions uh, uh, with the same semantic uh, uh, meaning. For example, trees here in red, not real life, of course, but uh, buildings in green. Um, and, well, why, won't, what, why do we want to do this? We want to gather that useful information uh, so, so that we can extract those uh, streetlights from those point clouds. And we do uh, that by a uh, uh, deep learning semantic segmentation algorithm called Randlanet. Uh, tell, tell you uh, later uh, a bit about that as well. Uh, but before we can actually do that, we of course need to gather a data set to train such a model on. In Amsterdam, we collected roughly 50,000 of these point clouds for, uh, with a size of 50 by 50 meters. Uh, and at the same time, we have roughly 125,000 streetlights. So we had to come up with a method to sort of select a, a appropriate training sets for this task. Um, and we did that uh, as following. We had sort of two important uh, aspects about it. First of all, uh, sort of societal aspect, and then also a statistical part. Societal uh, we, means that we want to uh, uh, ensure we uh, have a uh, diverse population that lives uh, across these point clouds so that we can uh, ensure that uh, every aspect of uh, uh, the city is uh, well sort of um, labeled or tra trained equally. And then, of course, we also want uh, different sceneries because with one uh, specific scenery, for example, the canals in Amsterdam, 
we cannot ensure that the rest of Amsterdam is actually uh, inferred uh, uh, also in a good manner. And of course, like a statistical part where we looked at the number of points in uh, point clouds, uh, sums of street lights, which are in the current registry the uh, city of Amsterdam has, uh, variety of street lights and rarity. So there's a couple of aspects that we looked at. And then we came up with uh, 50 point clouds from uh, 4900 uh, in Oost. Um, and that uh, set was used to uh, train our model on. But of course, before we can train a model, we need to label our training set. And therefore, we generated or created a data fusion pipeline, um, which fairly easily uh, allows us to label these uh, point clouds um, uh, fast and easily. And first of all, then we look at the ground. So we know uh, our elevation data in Amsterdam, and we can actually use that elevation data to uh, label our ground. You're depicted in uh, the goldish brown color. Subsequently, we can uh, label buildings. We have footprint shapes, BGT data, that's called. It's uh, also open for everybody to, to use. Um, uh, subsequently, we can label cars as like car-shaped objects. Uh, like the, the method here proposed seems rather sim simple, but it works very good. Then, of course, uh, some smaller objects, such as tree, lampposts, traffic signs, for example, we can use uh, like registry data from the city as well. And then the final step, we uh, need to check and correct a little bit ourselves. Um, but that's, well, it, 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 takes, it can take some time, but way, way less than uh, if you would label these point clouds all by ourselves. Well, then on to the training of the semantic segmentation model. Um, what you can see here on the uh, left uh, below is that those data sets are actually quite uh, skewed. So uh, some classes are, uh, uh, represent a majority of the points, but some actually a very uh, minor part of the points. So we want to like, uh, ensure that we also label those points, or sorry, train for those classes uh, well. And we can do that by just using a weighted scheme and also apply some uh, augmentation methods. And when we do that, we come up with these uh, upper right figures where we see that actually ground buildings and car are uh, well labeled by our model quite well. It's an IOU score, which uh, refers to uh, intersection over union, so sort of the overlap. Uh, and then for the, tr uh, for the trees, we actually perform quite well. well lamps and signs a little less, but of course, when we want to identify all those assets, it's not necessary to have like a 100% uh, accuracy score, 100% 100, 100 IOU. A bit more in detail than maybe about the model itself. Um, it's a sort of uh, subsampling, upsampling scheme, which you can see over here. And what happens is that in uh, the uh, sort of uh, random sampling, downsampling parts on the left side, we have these blocks. And these blocks actually ensure that we can aggregate features uh, of each point uh, uh, by looking in their, in their neighborhood. Uh, so we can select uh, some points with k-means, and then we can aggregate the, uh, the, the k-mean points to that particular point we're interested in. And you, we continue uh, to do that a couple of times while also subsampling. So we can create a very big receptive field for those points, so we can actually include local, but also quite good uh, uh, global information about those points. And then I'm handing it back to you. Yeah, so now we know where all those points are in space that are supposedly part of light poles. And of course, then it's the time to identif identify those individual light poles. So first, we are uh, clustering all those points in this light pole class and removing some noise. Uh, and then for each cluster, we try to retrieve its properties, right? Um, so what we do is we take horizontal slices of this 3D cloud, uh, take an uh, enclosing circle, take the middle, and then of all those points in the middle, we try to make a fit. Uh, and from this, we can get the exact location then, its height, and then also the angle. 
Um, and then we're still not ready to deliver our product um, because we, we saw we have quite a lot of false positives, which of course we want to uh, remove. Uh, some of it is very easily done automatically, which is some basic height filters, for example. And some stuff uh, really needs some, you know, uh, human attention. Uh, so for this, uh, we collaborate with a company called Spectrum Intelligence, or Spin AI, and they deliver annotation services and uh, mostly employ people from the autism spectrum. Um, and we work together uh, with giving them a poll-taking tool in which they can identify these po false positives and also, for example, to correct uh, the fits. Then we have our polls, but still we're not ready to uh, deliver uh, because we find it very important to also look at the ethical aspects uh, of a project. And for this, uh, we, we use the TADA manifesto. You can find it uh, online. Um, and it's not super important, you know, which, which framework you use. It's more important that you use a framework. And we, uh, we're very happy here to, to use this one. Um, so we're, we're looking at all those aspects and that are typically endangered in uh, digital projects. So one of them is, uh, for example, openness and transparency. So do you share about your methods or your code? Um, another one is that, do you remember that this is about humans and this is for humans? Um, is your goal legitimate? And is it legitimate to re retrieve data for this goal? Um, are people able to control what you're doing? Can they see what you're doing and can they have some uh, feedback on that? Um, and in the end, do you share your uh, data? Because of course, everything we do, it's for everyone, it's good to share data, but especially for us, because everything we do is uh, from public money, and yeah, we want to, of course, um, have that used as much as possible. Um, so a bit more practical is we, we create an ethical leaflet for each project. And yeah, basically, we, we rate ourselves on these uh, values, how we feel we're doing. So we're looking at moral opportunities and risks uh, within these values and then see how we, can, uh, how we can do better. And as you can see, it's a bit of a mixed status, but uh, at the end, all the way at the end of the project, of course, we hope to be uh, even better. And uh, yeah, at the very least, we're now working on that uh, bottom corner uh, over there, so you know why we're here. Um, yeah, another thing to work on this openness and transparency is that uh, we try to make uh, all of our repos uh, open. So we have this GitHub Amsterdam AI team. Um, and yeah, here you can find a lot of our work. A lot of our uh, repos are, uh, are public. Uh, and also the one we're talking about today, that's the one there in the bottom cor corner. Um, then on the topic uh, of fairness, so we want to evaluate like, how our work impacts uh, different groups of people. So we're talking, for example, about age groups, or, or what you see here is uh, social economic status. So we can compare our performance in different areas uh, with those indicators. Um, yeah, so we don't want to get you know, into this dilemma of what's more important, fairness or privacy. So we're not looking at individuals, but we're really looking at uh, neighborhood level. And then, Finally, we're in the process of uh, delivering our data to our end customer. Um, this is, in this case, of course, internal. Uh, so we have these attracted, extracted polls, and we want to uh, match that with the current asset registry, um, and then, of course, integrate. So we try to see which poll matches which one, and when we're really sure, they just take all our information, all the properties received, and just uh, put it in the registry, and when we're less sure, uh, there is still, again, uh, a human in the loop. Um, nice example here in the image where we did a small pilot uh, a short while ago uh, uh, near Oster Park, um, where we, for example, have 200 polls that we updated properties, uh, which are now nicely again in the asset registry, and actually also found 19 uh, new streetlights. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that brings us to the end of the project, and we're very happy to deliver this and uh, to give value to our internal customer, but most, of course, most importantly, to the, like, the, the safety of the people uh, in Amsterdam. Uh, we share more of our work and our methods uh, also on our website. It's called uh, Amsterdam Intelligence. 
Yeah, you can find it uh, on mshamintelligence.com. And we have uh, some nice blog posts uh, uh, on methods, but also links uh, to our data. Uh, also with a lot of other partners in the city uh, and also other people at the municipality uh, who work uh, with data, which is actually uh, maybe more than uh, you expect. And with that, I would like to end. And thank you for your attention.